Hi, my name is Lucas Ridley, and I'm with Digital Creator School. And in this little mini course, we're gonna make a procedurally built snow shader like you see here. And by the end of it, you'll be able to make this by yourself. And when I say procedural, it means we're not gonna paint any textures. This is all happening uh, with nodes built into Maya, no plugins or anything. We're gonna use the Arnold renderer. And you can see just by the geometry here, we're gonna use these basic shapes and we're gonna turn them into these snow shapes. So you wanna have some experience with Maya already. And if you don't, I teach, I think it's over 40 hours now on Digital Creator School. And you can find those courses there to get up to speed so that this course makes a little more sense. And it is the industry leading software for 3D animation modeling and movie making and video game making. So. Um, it's definitely the program you want to learn if you want to get into that industry. But uh, if you're watching this, you're probably a more intermediate user. Maybe you've already taken my classes and you just want to kind of know how to make something unique like this. So let's jump right in and start a new scene. I'm go to File, New Scene. I'm not going to save this. And I'm going to set my project real quick just as a good habit. And... You can set it to whatever folder you want and say create default workspace. So now what I'm gonna do is create a sphere. And this is gonna be our little uh, kind of model we're gonna work with, pretty simple. And everything we're gonna be doing is gonna be in the hypershade, which is this little button up here on the top right. And we get this new window called the hypershade. And so what we're gonna do is build our shaders in this hypershade. But first let's assign it here by right clicking going down to assign new material. And we have the Arnold options here. If you don't see this, you can go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and down here it should say M to A Bundle, and you can load that there. So let's go down to the Arnold shader and choose the AI standard surface. This is what you're gonna use 95% of the time, maybe 99% of the time. And so we have a pretty basic uh, setup. For us to preview this in uh, uh, render, we need some lights in the scene first. So I'm just gonna make uh, two directional lights. I'm gonna go over to the rendering tab here and make one here. And I'm just gonna move it to the side so we can see it. Moving it doesn't actually affect um, its direction because the directional, all that matters is the rotation. So I'm just hitting E on the keyboard to pull up rotation. And I'm gonna duplicate this and kind of go in the opposite direction a little bit. So you can kind of see the direction they're facing. And I'm probably gonna move these around later, but just to kind of get them in the ballpark of uh, you know where I want them to be. So now if we go to Arnold, open Arnold render view, and let's hit play over here. We can see we do indeed have this. So uh, it's set up properly. We can see our lights. It, it's well lit for us right now. That's all that matters. We'll deal with more lighting later. So now that we have our shader assigned, let's select the sphere. In the hypershade, the quickest way to map the shader is to click this little button right here. So that clears everything out and it, it maps our shader. So I'm gonna try to zoom in here a little bit so it's easier to see on your screen. And I am going to just close this down. You can leave this up and you can search for nodes that we'll be searching for in here. But just to have more room, I am gonna close that down so we have a bigger space to work and you can see what I'm doing. So this is all the you know material attributes that you can find over here as well. You can kind of see they have all these little radio buttons here that you can plug in and out. And you can see there's already one happening here to the uh, group of the shader. And this is the actual shader itself. And what we need to do is we need to add some displacement. And displacement is a little more of an advanced subject. It's basically just saying, let's apply some textures to this thing that we'll only see at render time that will affect how it gets um, kind of rendered out. Basically, black and white values are gonna mean should the geometry be pushed out or in. And that will happen at render time. So let's do one and you can see what that means. So I'm gonna hit, uh, type uh, tab here to pull up the little search window. I'll just say, displace and we'll get displacement shader and then we get it has its own group here but we're going to want to use the shader group we already have so we can just delete this and now we can map the displacement into the displacement shader of the the shader group that we have over here so 
the next thing we want to do is give it a texture. So let's hit tab again, and we'll just choose a fractal texture. And that's going to be the texture we're going to pipe in to the displacement shader. So we have the color here, and we want to choose the color and go into the vector displacement. We can just toggle that tangent one down. And we have a UV kind of place texture node here. We have our texture, and so that's going into the displacement shader, which is going into the group. So all that gets piped into what's displayed here. You can see nothing's changed in the viewport, but if we go to the open Arnold render view and we hit play, we get this kind of crazy blob here. And the problem is, is there's not enough geometry to describe this texture properly, right? So if we look at a preview of this texture, we can actually solo it here in the Arnold render view by clicking this little button. You can see all there's all this little detail everywhere. But if you look at the wireframe of our model here, um, there's not as many edges as there are texture here in the uh, in the texture that we've put in. So that means we need to increase the geometry so there's more edges here that can help describe this texture. So what we want to do is with the object selected, go down into the subdivision of the object here in the shape uh, tab. So let's scroll down to the bottom under Arnold. If this isn't already open, you can open Arnold. Scroll down to get the subdivision here. And then you want to turn the type on to Cat Clark. And let's crank this up to something like four. Now, with that being the only change that we've made, let's go from this kind of crazy weird object and hit play again. Now you can see how much more detail we actually have in our model. It's uh, incredibly uh, much more detailed. So. It's, it's crazy spastic. It does not look like a little snowball right now, so we need to change that. I'm just gonna hit uh, stop on this, because I will warn you, um, you know, depending on the version of Maya you're in, I'm in 2018.5, and they might have fixed this in 2019. I'm not sure yet, but um, updating displacement shader info while having the Arnold Ren Render View um, played button turned on can crash Maya. So I try to stop that <laughs> whenever I'm making adjustments. So the main thing that we can do though is to turn down the amplitude. So let's just crank down the amplitude. And that just means, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna break my rule. I'm gonna turn this on and we have solo turned on. So you can see the texture that we have selected. And I'm just gonna dial down amplitude and you can see you know, I'm getting kind of lucky here. It's not crashing or anything, but the amplitude, meaning how much is it expanding out, which is not much. So what I want is a lower ratio. Ratio basically means how much detail is in this thing. And I don't really want that much. Um, I want bigger, I want bigger displacement on this first fractal. We're gonna add another one later that's gonna deal with the more detailed stuff so that we can have finer control over the kind of two levels of detail where we have this bigger detail and then we have the smaller detail. So with that, let's unsolo this and see where it's at. So that's looking a lot closer to a snowball than what we had before. In this render preview, you can see there's all these little speckled highlights and that's the reflection or what is known as the specular. So let's just increase the roughness quite a bit so that it smooths out those reflections. Because if you think about how snow um, actually works, it's not highly reflective. It's not like ice or something. So it's actually a really soft, diffuse uh, highlight there. And then we'll add the kind of glistening effect later on. So we have a pretty good start here. I think there's maybe a little too much detail. So let's just go back into the fractal and crank down the ratio. And we'll just bring the frequency ratio down 1.4 as well. You can see that makes a big difference. It smooths everything out. So the next thing we're gonna deal with is adding another texture. So let's hit tab and we're gonna use the mix shader to add another texture. So again, this comes in with its own group. We don't need that because we already have a group. And we're gonna pipe this into the vector displacement now. And we're gonna pipe the color into the first shader here. Even though we're, it's a texture um, and this says shader, it'll still work just fine. So right now it's set to blend. I like to do an add. I don't think there's that big a difference between the two. Um, so now what we should have is something 
pretty close. I'm just gonna close this and open it back up. What I'm gonna do is tear this menu off because we might have to end up opening and closing to refresh Arnold Render View. You can see how it refreshed there. So if you notice down here, it says a mix weight of 0.5. So it's taking our fractal and it's diluting it by a half. So if we turn this up to one, it's gonna be all the way into shader two, which is nothing. That's why it's turning back into a perfect sphere. But if we turn this to uh, zero, it will be back to what we had it. But we wanna mix two, sh two textures together. So let's keep this at 0.5 and then let's bring in another fractal. I'll hit tab to bring up the quick search here and I will add another fractal texture. And then let's pipe this into the shader two and you can see it's freaking out because we haven't affected any of the attributes yet. So let's just pull this over here. I wanna make sure we can see both of them at the same time. So, and I'm kind of running, it's a risky move right now <laughs> that I'm letting this actively update while I'm messing with displacement values. So just be wary of that. I'm gonna bring the amplitude way down and uh, maybe something like 0.1 because what I wanna do now is the much finer detail. And for the ratio, let's maybe crank this up just a touch, just to add a little more detail. Now you can see there's a lot finer detail happening in the clump. If we go to the mix shader and let's say, let's just do all the first one and then all of the second one, you can see they're very different um, textures. But when we combine them together, we kind of get that big uh, big shape change and the smaller texture as well combined. You can see the silhouette of this changes once we start to introduce that first fractal a little bit. And it's a little outside of the scope of this lesson, but basically the top looks all kind of crazy because of the UVs. And you can get around that. Displacement in UVs is kind of a tricky thing. Um, how I like to get around that is just to play everything towards camera and uh, wrap UVs in a way that um, just based on the camera view, everything will look good um, and just kind of cheat it basically because UVs can be quite a headache. And um, at least for this lesson, it's not really worth it to go into <laughs> that hour long lesson. So now that we have the shader looking pretty good, let's start to update the displacement. So let's go over to displacement and I've turned it to 0.2 and you can just keep increasing that if you want. Um, scale is pretty a, a similar value to this. Um, these are yellow because that's where our texture is getting piped into. And we have a vector space of tangent. If, we, if you change this vector space, it'll change how um, it's interpreting how to portray those textures on this object. Um, I just like tangent space. The other thing that we'll deal with here in a little bit is probably the bounds. Basically just, um, it might artificially limit uh, how much displacement can happen and we might need to increase this from zero. So now that we have the textures in a pretty good spot, let's take a look at the shader itself. So I'll click on the shader and let's go through all of these attributes. White is okay for the color because it is snow and we've turned the roughness way up, but we left incidents of reflection uh, on default. So if we click here, we can actually get presets. I'm clicking on this kind of equal sign, the triple equal sign there and we can go to ice, but the snow, is not, snow would be closer to water than ice, so let's go to water. And basically this, this is just a index of refraction is like a scientific number that they figure out what ma different materials, how they ref refract light. And you can look up more scientific stuff about that. The big thing we wanna deal with now is subsurface scattering. That means as light en enters, it will enter the snow or any object, whatever shader we put this on, object we put it on, it'll enter that object and the light will bounce around on the inside. Uh, it's like if you uh, shined a flashlight up your nose, your nose would turn red, uh, kind of a thing. So we wanna have light to be able to pass through this object, which will soften it up and make it look, um, you know, have that kind of transparent quality of snow. So let's just crank down the subsurface color a little bit because we want to we want this to look natural. So we don't want it to be a pure white. And then for radius, um, that basically um, scale and radius are kind of similar. It's basically like how far into the object does the light get to scatter. 
And I'm gonna bring this down a little bit and I'm also gonna give this a little bit of color. Um, you can see I've chosen a kind of blue gray here earlier and you can see these values here. Um, and you can also change if you wanna uh, use different uh, color methods here, you can toggle this little menu down. So now that we have that, the last thing we wanna do is change the type to random walk. It'll increase our render time a little bit, but you can already tell just in that one option, we brightened up the uh, from diffusion, which kind of look like clay or something much darker. Uh, random walk will kind of brighten this up. Uh, it's, it's a lot more accurate of calculation, uh, which means it might take a little bit longer, um, but that is gonna be super helpful. So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna close the hypershade just super quick, and uh, I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna pause this. I'm also gonna save this super quick <laughs> because um, Maya is known to crash Snow Shader, so I recommend you save frequently, and you can also turn on incremental save uh, in, in the preferences of Maya. So um, the next thing I wanna do is add a light to make this believable, because we're trying to go for a realistic quality, so we need realistic environment lights to help us sell this effect because right now it's kind of still looking blobby we need we need a little better lighting situation so let's go to arnold and we'll go to lights and we'll go to sky dome light so now we can pipe in a texture and at hdri haven um, there are plenty of free hdris so what we're going to do is click this little checker box and open uh, this little window we're gonna choose file. And now we have the option to map in a file. And I already have one in my project folder. They just recently put up a couple uh, snow HDRIs, which is perfect for this because we, we kind of want a cool, meaning temperature, uh, color temperature, we want a cool image. Um, so that now when we pipe this in, watch this change. Let me just, I'll save this with this little, uh, let me delete that one. I'm gonna save this with this little camera button here. So we have before and after of the magical, okay, it's a little bright. <laughs> I'm gonna click the sky dome light back here just by, you can see where it mapped the image in. I'm gonna click that to pull up the attributes and just half this intensity to 0.5. So just in that one, you can see how important lighting is when you're trying to figure out shading and sell a realistic shader. I'm gonna let this finish so we can kind of have a better comparison between the before and after. Um, but already you can see, we're starting to be able to see a lot more of that internal texture of the snow than we were before. So I think that's, let me just get, so I wanna see a little more of this silhouette. And cool. So I'm gonna hit stop and then I'm gonna hit the camera again and then you can just kind of toggle between these two and you can tell a huge difference between these two. And this one looks like snow and this one doesn't basically. And that's a lot of the lighting. Um, so that's super helpful for us. And the last thing that we wanna look at is to go into the, select the object. So we get the shader. Let's go over to the coat. All right, so the coat is gonna be that kind of um, just melted snow. So it's actually water that's kind of coating the snowball or the snow cube or cylinder, whatever we wanna put the shader on. Um, so let's crank up the weight of that. And then let's, we'll leave the roughness here, but we want to have a similar instance of refraction like we did with water. So we'll just choose water or you can type in 1.33 and we can hit play on this and you can see we don't have a play button because we're still looking at the old uh, capture that we did. So let's hit the little eyeball button down here. Now we can click the play button and we should have little sparkly highlights on this now because what the coat is doing is basically wrapping this whole thing in another layer of kind of specularity for lack of a better word. So now you can already see these little pings of light 
catching on the texture. So the back and forth that you might need to do now is to jump back into the hypershade. If this isn't uh, as much as you would like to see, you could increase the amount of uh, the texture of the finer texture. So let's just take a, a freeze shot there and we can just toggle back and forth. You can see these tiny little highlights here really sell that this is uh, snow and that it's you know maybe starting to melt or something um, but that it's wet you know um, so just real quick I'm going to show you like I mentioned if you wanted to kind of start tweaking this stuff I'm not going to spend a ton of time tweaking this because uh, this is it can get really time consuming if you really want to art direct this stuff very specifically but if you remember fractal 2 was the more detailed one uh, I can just increase the amplitude and just see where that gets us. So I will hit play and see if that adds a lot more texture, which maybe gives the light more surfaces to ping off of. Um, the other thing you have to think about when you think about reflections is the direction of the light, um, because basically a lot of the reflections happen kind of at a, an angle opposite of where the light is coming in. So it's really dependent on the light as well. So we could also take these directional lights and start to move them around and see if that gives us uh, the highlights we already want, that they're there, we just don't have the light um, pointed in the right direction. Let me see. The other thing we could do is just point this light from behind and let's crank up. The one that's pointing from behind, it's kinda hard to see now, let me separate these. The one that's coming from behind Let's crank up the intensity um, so we can maybe see a little more subsurface scattering happening. I'll just crank that up and then maybe look from the side just a touch. And what, should, what we should see is a little bit more softness of the light coming in from that angle. And again, once again, you can see where lighting has a really big effect on selling these realistic shaders, having you know, an HDRI that's really good and uh, lighting directionally done right. Um, but I mean, really quickly, just in, you know, 15 minutes or so, procedurally, we didn't have to paint any of this. This is what's super cool is on the fly, we can go back into these uh, fractal textures and adjust their attributes um, as we need them to be adjusted. So, pretty happy with this look. I'm going to let this finish out. So I'm pretty happy with this look, and even though we have this kind of wonky UV thing happening up here that I'm not going to spend too much time resolving. It actually kind of looks like shards of ice or something. Once we have the subsurface scattering and stuff going in through here, um, unless I had called this out earlier, I don't know if anyone would really mention that because it does kind of look just like part of the snowball. Um, but so just to demonstrate how powerful this is, I'm gonna pause this, I'm gonna save that render, and I'm going to make a couple more objects real quick just to show you this could be added to anything and also to demonstrate we may need to um, update the bounds of this thing. I'm gonna scale this down so that these objects aren't running into each other because if you notice, uh, the displacement map is actually making these objects bigger than they appear. So don't forget, you know, we gotta go down here to the subdivision on the shape node and turn on Cat Clark, crank this thing up. And so it's basically subdividing the existing geometry by five times. So if we look at the cube, there's not a ton of geometry currently to divide by five times. So what you might wanna do is just go over here to the channel box and increase the subdivisions, you know, a couple of times. So it actually has a little more room to, uh, to subdivide. So now with those two objects selected, I'm just gonna right click, go down to, let me get this so you can see it on the screen. Right click, go down to existing material and choose the standard surface. And now when we look at this, uh, we should very quickly uh, see we have all cubes. And that is, I did this because I also wanted to show the bounds padding here, which we can adjust on the shader to make sure it happens across all of them. You can see that we have bounds padding here, but keep in mind we had just the torus selected, so we'd have to go through each one of these objects. 
and every new object we apply the shader to. So let's go over to the displacement shader and drop down the Arnold tab and increase the bounds padding to maybe five or something like that. So now you can see these are no longer all cubes. They actually have room to uh, displace and they're not holding their shape super well. So what we could do is actually just decrease the amount that this is uh, getting displaced. We could drop the scale down. We could drop the displacement value down. Um, the other thing we could do is add a scalar value of 0.5 and see if that helps contain this. But, you know, we basically have a donut snowball now, uh, which is pretty cool. So I just wanted to demonstrate really quickly, you know, how you could just apply this shader to any object and it will assume that uh, snow-like quality. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this course, like, comment, and subscribe. And please join me over at Digital Creator School if you'd like to become a member and get even more in-depth training on Maya. I will update that site uh, about every month with new training. So I look forward to seeing you over there and also look forward to seeing you here on the YouTube channel. And I also like to post on Instagram stories. So if you're over there uh, on Instagram, check that out. I post discount codes and, you know, little work in progresses and behind the scenes stuff in my stories. Uh, so check that out. This scene file, as well as the shader itself, will be available to all Digital Creator School members in the resource library section of the website of your membership uh, enrollment. So there's a little section where there's gonna be a bunch of assets and I'm just gonna add this as well uh, to uh, that list of assets that are available to students. I look forward to seeing you in class and thanks for watching.